Hi, it's Kernetex here with a new series of videos about building Linux from scratch 4.0 on Linux from scratch 1.0, so using Linux from scratch 1.0 as a host. Now before I carry on, what I'm going to do is to boot up the machine that I'm going to be building Linux from scratch 4 on, which is the same machine as I built Linux from scratch 1.0 on, which is a Pentium um, MMX 233 megahertz with 64 megabytes of memory. Um, I'm actually going to be booting not from the SUS Linux which we built Linux from scratch one and not from Linux from scratch one either. Um, I'm going to be booting from a live CD that Linux from scratch um, released um, around 2006-2007 reason being is I'm going to be building on the same disk in a new partition that SUS and Linux from scratch one already residing on and the older um, F disks don't allow um, any editing or like cause there's errors that are caused you get some sort of problems when you try to edit the same disk that's already got live file systems on. So I'm booting this live CD um, to create the new partition. If you're if you're going to follow along or do this yourself, and you're you're going to create Linux scratch Linux from scratch four on a separate disk, you won't need to do this. You can um, do it from within Linux from scratch one or or the SUS if you've still got those around. Uh, you could if you did follow Linux from scratch one. You could even use the SUSE boot disk to um, create the partitions as, as I did in the Linux and Scratch 1 videos. So I'm just going to start this booting by pressing enter. I thought it would auto boot it. It doesn't. I think it would just sit there for a while. Um, wait for that to load. It takes a while for the kernel to load off the disk. Um, so yeah, this, this has all come about because while I was building Linux and Scratch 1 and sometime afterwards, I was wondering whether it would be worth looking at some of the later versions um, just after Linux from scratch one if it would be worth attempting to build them and when I looked some of the immediately subsequent versions so like version 2 and 3 were kind of similar to uh, version 1 and they were released quite often roughly once a month we'll look at the um, release dates in the Linux from scratch museum so I decided oh, I wonder what 4 would look like because 4 was the version I first built um, and in theory it's quite a jump in terms of numbers but there's not that much of a jump it is a bit of a leap um, and it has ended up for various reasons the main reason that there didn't seem to be any sources for the original um, Linux from scratch 4.0 packages anymore they don't seem to be anywhere on the internet. I haven't got my own copy, unfortunately. Um, although later on, I did start keeping copies of certain versions that I built. Um, so I didn't have any original copies of packages. So it meant I had to go around on the internet looking for packages. And partly for the fact that it's a big jump from one to four, and partly for the other fact that, as I say, there's no available packages, what it meant was that I ended up building 4.0 using packages from Linux from scratch 1, packages from Linux from scratch 5.0, um, and most of the packages were pulled off the internet, um, actually from um, several sources, but my, uh, which is the same as with Linux from scratch 1, there was no packages available. Most of the packages I, I downloaded were from um, Slackware 8.1, um, which is kind of the same as Linux and Scratch 1. And I think there's one or two from Fedora. I think they've got some older packages up. Um, the Slackware were better because they seem to have original dates on the archives, whereas the Fedora one seemed to be dated around... Well, I can't remember now. They're a lot, lot newer than what I thought they should be. Um, I'm rebuilding on the same hardware as before. Although Linux from scratch one is slightly newer um, than, sorry, Linux from scratch four is slightly newer. In, it's probably about a year or two newer than 
um, Linux and Scratch one. Um, I haven't got any hardware that would kind of fit in to be from around that that sort of period. Um, the closest I've got is probably about six months newer, which I wanted to make this as authentic as possible. But the other problem is it's it's an AMD chip and it might produce binaries that wouldn't work on um, subsequent builds if I decided to go ahead and um, do this again. So go to version 5, for example. So what I've done is I've stuck with this Pentium 233. Um, same, exactly the same hardware as in Linux from Scratch 1.0. As I say, it's not not too old. Uh, Linux from Scratch 4 still builds in a reasonable time. Um, I remember, as I say, when I built Linux 4.0, uh, Linux from Scratch 4.0, initially it was on a 48666 and it took a couple of weeks. Um, I didn't realise how long it would take, but I'd started to get into it, so I thought I'd just leave it on there. Um, working but the Pentium 233 it's it's quite reasonable build times I think the longest build is GCC and it's about two hours two and a half hours or so in in the final build um, part of the uh, book um, so and all, all the other ones most of them normally take you know a few minutes so it's, it's quite reasonable right so I've nearly booted up uh, the live CD for Linux from scratch um, this is from around about 2006 2007 it's based around Linux from scratch 6.3 so it's a little bit newer than what we'll be building but it's it's adequate it produces um, a partition that's workable it doesn't do anything that's only going to work with later versions of Linux so it's okay um, I'll give information I can't show at the moment but I can show you how to download this is still available on some mirrors um, to download and try it out if you want to it's not much use for anything I think on the website as I remember it says it's it won't build anything past Linux from scratch 7 um, if you want to use it as a host um, don't use it as a host for building Linux from scratch for the all the all the packages will be way too new. Um, just won't work. So I'm just gonna set this up. I don't know why we're missing the first character of the line, unfortunately. Right, looks no no, it still looks a bit offset. Uh, Right, I can't seem to get that to synchronise. Let me try and unplug the lead and see if that gets it to resynchronise. That's the problem with having an analog signal. It's the um, Right, that's not too bad. It's still off by a few pixels. Yeah, with the analog signal, it's um, you rely on the piece of hardware to try and lock on to the um, the like the pulses that indicate the start of the frame and so on on the scan of the analog TV signal or monitor signal. So it looks like it's all right now. Just try and yeah, that does look okay. So as I say, what, I'm, what the only reason I'm booting into this live CD, and hopefully won't need it again um, when we come to get the machine to boot, um, because we will be writing a new version of Lilo, or in fact, writing a new um, boot um, image for um, getting Linux from scratch 4.0 booted. Uh, there is a chance of failure there, but um, we'll see how we go. So what I'm going to do here is to list the first disk and you can see it's the same disk as before um, and basically what I've got, I reserved a partition here for DOS which I haven't actually used in the end. Um, I thought I might be you know, trying something out but I didn't bother in the end. Uh, we've got a boot partition here which is HDA2. HDA3 is a swap partition, which, um, oh yes, it was only it could only be 128 megabytes, as I remember, that SUSE would allow us to create, so that's why that looks so small. So what I might actually do 
is create a new swap. I'll leave that for Suze to use, but I might create a new swap partition for um, the subsequent builds to use. Um, in case I do decide to go ahead and do later some scratch builds, which um, I'm still mulling over in my mind. I haven't looked into it yet. If it looks like it might not be worth it, I won't bother. But just thinking ahead, I might do that. So what I'm going to do, um, sorry. So uh, yeah, that's the swap partition. Uh, HDA4 is the extended partition because it's a DOS um layout of partitions so you can only have four primary partitions or three primary and one extended uh, so that means hda5 is the um, SUSE partition hda6 is the linux from scratch 1.0 partition so i'm going to create a new partition um, on uh, hda so new take the default start and i'm going to create it two gigabytes is probably going to be more than enough i would have thought one gigabyte would be enough as well but i'll give myself two gigabytes there's some room to play with in case i want to make archives or you know whatever so let's do plus 2g now if you remember when we did this on the linux from scratch one the SUS f disk was so old it didn't understand gigabytes so i had to put in um, 8192 kilobytes is the size of the partition, but this understands um, gigabytes. I'm going to create a two gigabyte partition, and you can see it's it's taken that. So if I now print that up, you can see it's created. I presume because it's gigabytes rather than kilobytes, it that's why this partition is smaller than the previous one, even though it's effectively the same size. It's reduced the number of um, blocks assigned and I guess that's the rounding error due to the binary and decimal versions of what a kilobyte is and what a megabyte is and so on. So that's fine. I'm going to write that to disk and wait for that to occur. These old disk utilities or F disk in particular in the EXT are incredibly slow. Um, so I presume they do things slightly differently. I don't think it's the hardware itself that's particularly slow. So that's done. Let's list that up. And you can see it's created that. So I'm not going to do anything else. All I want to do is create the um, partition there. Now, should I format that? No, I'll do that in the system, in the Linux from Scratch 1.0 system, because um, there was a time where the um, structure of the EXT file system changed as I remember the number of inodes per block or something changed and it means that the newer file systems aren't backwards compatible um, I wouldn't be able to mount it and things I can't remember exactly when that happened I'm not going to take a risk so what I'm going to do is to reboot and boot into Linux from scratch one So I'll just wait for this to reboot. Okay, so it's ejected the disk. I'll just remove the disk, close the tray, and press enter. It should reboot. Okay, so the screen will be flicking because there's no video signal. As soon as it comes back up again, it will hopefully lock on. So just have to bear with it. There goes the floppy seek. Okay, here we go. So if I type in LFS-1.0 and we'll boot into the host operating system which we built last in the last video or previous video about this <clears throat> okay so there's the login i'll log in as the root 
and if I try to look at the HDA, you can see it doesn't actually come up. It, it like hides it. So that's the reason why I've created that partition um, in the live CD. Now, despite that, you can actually uh, format the partition. Uh, if you remember, it was HDA7. So I'll format and obviously make sure this is the correct partition. Um, you can't list it, so I was just making a note if you're unsure because you can't view it at all. So I'm just going to format that. You can see, even though it didn't come up, it does know about it and it's formatted it. So in theory, I should be able to mount that partition. And you can see there we've got a um, well, just slightly less than two gigabytes available to use. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do everything remotely again, just so that I can have a browser up um, and copying paste commands, because obviously at the moment I can't do anything apart from what's in the text uh, console. And it'd be incredibly difficult to carry on. So I'll just uh, set that up and be back 